Metal Jesus here, and I'm back again with Kinsey. Hello, and today we're going to be talking about a buying guide for the Sega Game Gear. And you are perfect for this video because you had one as a kid, right? Yep, that was pretty much my go-to handheld as a kid because um, it was like color screen. Yeah. And I'm like, yeah, this is awesome. Well, and we were going to be doing this video because we get a lot of requests for it. I think there's a lot of kind of mystery around the Game Gear. Mm -hmm. So we're going to talk about the hardware, what to look out for, as well as some of the variants, the accessories, and we're going to recommend some games you get day one. Let's take a look. So first, we're going to talk about the hardware. And the Game Gear was actually pretty special for the time because it was backlit and color. Which is really important compared to the original Game Boy, which was what, black and white or... Green. <laughs> green and yellow. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so Sega was attempting to do something, you know, kind of forward thinking and bring mm -hmm. color to the handheld. Now, actually, to be fair, the Atari Lynx did it first. But this was another answer to that. And, mm -hmm. you know, for the most part, I mean, when this came out, that was a huge selling point. Yeah. Yeah. It was amazing. When I first saw this um, at the store, I was like, that's the one I want. Yeah. Like <laughs> <laughs> now, some of the other things I like about the, the Game Gear is that I think it's really comfortable to hold. Mm -hmm. I like how it's wide, almost like a PSP or something like that. It's really yeah. comfortable even today. It's really, really nice. Yeah. And, it, you know, on the original Game Boy, I'm, you know, I... <laughs> I have to go like this to play stuff. <laughs> so I definitely prefer that. And now as far as collecting goes, one of the really great things about the Game Gear as well is that there are over 300 games made for it. Mm -hmm. And if you get an adapter, you can also play most Master System games with it. Because I think it's mm -hmm. similar technology or similar... Um, right? The Game Gear is basically a repackaged Master System. Right. So it's basically the same tech. So just in a cure package. Yeah, and a lot of people, <laughs> especially in North America, didn't really get into collecting for the master system. So this is an op you know, this is an option for people. Yeah. And most of the games are dirt cheap. Yeah. Now <laughs> I get really surprised when I'm like, oh, that game gear game's twenty-five dollars. <laughs> right, right. <laughs> like <laughs> Yeah, I mean to give you an idea, the most expensive game I think is Panzer Dragon Mini. Mm-hmm. And that's by far the most expensive one. I think it's like a hundred bucks. Yeah, it's like a hundred bucks. Yeah, but they, they just go <laughs> down from there. And, yeah. and you know, most of them are like literally a dollar, five bucks, ten bucks, something yeah. like that. Yeah, especially the Panzer Dragoon and Mortal Kombat Three. Huh. Are they really expensive ones. Yeah, there's a couple of them, but yeah. not many. So it's it's very easy to collect for, which mm -hmm. is what I like. And actually, that's kind of what I do is when I go out, if I see a Game Gear game I don't own, I'll be like, sure, you yeah. know, why not? $3, $1, yes. So so that's kind of some of the positives. Now, there are some negatives, and, and we talked about the screen. And while Sega was trying to do something really far advanced, the thing is that screen technology on a handheld just sucked batteries. Yeah. And so, it, unfortunately, this will cook through uh, six AA batteries in no time. Yeah, when I was little, I tried to take one on a road trip. <laughs> that was a lot of gas station batteries I went through. <laughs> <laughs> That's so funny. Uh, the other thing about it is that, unfortunately, some of the capacitors that, that were used in this fail a lot. And so, um, it's, it's kind of unusual to find a perfectly working Game Gear, unfortunately. Mm -hmm. And so, as a matter of fact, my first Game Gear, the screen was funky, they had no sound. <laughs> Gotta wear headphones and lean it weird, and you're like, all right, this I can now do? Like <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but one of the good things is, and you, some of you watching this may have noticed that this is a little bit unusual, this one right here. So this is modded, and there's a bunch of people out there who mod these. Uh, as a matter of fact, a guy named Marco did this. Uh, he's part of, I think, the Atari Age forum. And essentially what he did is he replaced uh, the, the screen on here with an LCD screen, super bright, and it's shockingly better. So yeah. we'll actually compare them in a second here. Uh, he also replaced a lot of the capacitors for the sound, um, which which is really nice of him to do that. And then also it has VGA out. Oh, that's so awesome. Yes, so <laughs> this is really cool. So basically if you use the brightness uh, over here, you can either set it to be on the handheld or you can send it out to your TV or your computer monitor. Oh, it changes it completely. I mean, if, if someone is going to start collecting Game Gear now, because the, the screen is kind of one of the bummers, it's really hard yeah. to go and buy one of these today and, and have to kind of deal with that screen. Yeah. You know, so getting a new screen on there, 
is like it's, it's night and day. Yeah, it's bringing new life to the Game Gear, which is awesome because there's great games for it. Just it gets overlooked a lot. Yeah, definitely. Now there are a lot of accessories, so let's talk about that next. All right, so we were talking about the terrible battery life of the Game Gear, but there are other solutions, right? Mm -hmm. We can get you a one of a kind chick magnet. <laughs> I can wear this baby on your belt. <laughs> when you first met mentioned this, I was like, what the hell are you talking about? Oh, right. <laughs> you seem like a fanny pack, you know? Yeah. <laughs> my, this is my Game Gear fanny pack and my Game Gear battery pack. <laughs> I just need like a Game Gear hat. I'm surprised you don't have one. Oh, <laughs> I, I wish know. I did. <laughs> but this is a rechargeable uh, Game Gear battery pack. It's actually kind of cool. Yeah, yeah. And it like really helps extend the life of your battery and you're not yeah. always going to get more double A's. I know. <laughs> just to do this video, I, I sent Rebecca, my wife, to go to Target to buy a bunch of batteries just so we would have them. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's ridiculous, right? But, it, but so it's nice that this is here. And the other thing too is that you can use a Genesis uh, power adapter as well. Mm -hmm. Yeah, for the Genesis 2, I, I actually did that a lot when I was little. Mm. I just sat by the wall and played my Game Gear. <laughs> yeah, and so I think a lot of people do that now too. Yeah. You know, even myself when I'm in my game room here, I just use that. So, mm -hmm. and it so it's not that big of a deal. Um, so some other accessories are, of course, I forget what this is called. The super wide gear. Super wide gear. <laughs> And it's funky too. Like it opens up like this. It hooks on the back, and it, mm -hmm. yeah. I do, honestly, I don't feel like it needs it that much. But it's just one of those things no. that you had back then, right? I used it when I oh, was you little. Did? I was like, "This is awesome! Look how big it is!" <laughs> yeah, like. <laughs> They should do this for other stuff. Now that I'm thinking about it, what if this would like hook on the Vita or something? That'd be yeah. hilarious. That'd be great. <laughs> That'd be great. Um, another thing is, we mentioned it earlier, and that is you can play most Master System games on it because mm -hmm. the technology is very similar. All you need is a Master Gear converter. Yeah. <laughs> now, what's, what, what's kind of weird about this is that this it can be kind of collectible or expensive. Not, mm -hmm. not super expensive, but this can cost you more than the Game Gear itself, which is hilarious. Yeah. <laughs> but it's pretty cool. I mean, you basically uh, pop the game in here, it attaches to the back, turn it on, and you're playing Master System games. So mm -hmm. it's pretty awesome. Um, another accessory that a lot of people were kind of impressed with was the TV tuner. Yeah, watch TV on your Game Gear. <laughs> Color TV. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> but of course, it's really kind of useless today because it's all broadcast and digital. Yeah, and the rabbit ears won't really help you. Yeah, it won't really <laughs> help you. But um, that's pretty much for accessories, right? There's a lot of bags and things yeah, like that. Yeah, there's a link cable. Oh, right, right, right. You want to play Game Gear with your friends? <laughs> that's right. Yeah, so that's the accessories. But um, now we probably want to talk about some of the variants of the hardware, mm -hmm. right? Because this is where it can be pretty exciting collecting for the Game Gear. The Game Gear itself, the black one, is not very expensive. I mean, it's like, what, 15, 20 bucks? Yeah. Um, but this is the one a lot of people know of. So I don't even know if yeah. a lot of people know it comes in other colors. Yeah, it's true. So um, I showed off in a pickups video a little while ago, the yellow one. <sighs> I know. <laughs> you know, uh, a lot of people thought this was fake or some sort of shell, mm -hmm. but it actually was released in Japan. That's where this comes from. They get so. all the good colors. I know. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, I absolutely love it. I think it's like beautiful. So yeah. there's yellow, um, also blue. Yep. The blue one is probably one of the more common mm -hmm. colors. So a little bit rarer than the black, but not much. It's but a nice color of blue. Still though. awesome. Yeah. And then you have, I think, one of the rarer ones, right? Yeah. They're certainly collectible. There was also some special edition ones released, as there is for most systems. Right. Um, but in Japan, for example, this one's the Magic Knight Ray Earth system. That's cool. Which, if you're an anime kid like I am, love it. Yeah. Ray Earth is awesome. And now, and did it come with the game? Mm hmm. And it came with the <laughs> Ray Earth game as well. <laughs> Same exact color as the system, which mm -hmm. is perfect. And it's beautiful. It's all matchy matchy. Um, and if you like Ray Earth, especially getting the game and the system together, it's kind of, I don't know, it was magical when I saw it. And you have it in the box. I was like, wow. <laughs> yeah. And the game's really fun too, If you like, especially if you like Ray Earth, because it's just kind mm. of a, an action game yeah. and it's really fun. There's also some other variants too, like there's a Coca-Cola one, which has another color red, which is really cool mm -hmm. looking too. And uh, you know, there's a few others that people are all looking out for. Yeah. So. It's awesome. So now we're going to talk about some games. These aren't necessarily like the rarest or like the craziest, but these are the ones that we think are really good to own or we just really enjoy. Mm -hmm, absolutely. So on that note, I'm going to start with The Lion King because it's on like everything. Um, but this is like me riding the nostalgia train for a little bit. Uh, the Lion King and also um, Bonkers House of Wax. Hmm. It's awesome, you guys. Don't judge me. <laughs> 
but this basically were the games I played as a child. And every, it doesn't do it justice when I play this on any other system. So this is always recommended by me, and it's not that expensive, so right. I think it's worth it. And it really shows off the Game Gear's capabilities. That's cool. So a game I'm gonna recommend here is a game I was surprised that I really enjoyed. I don't know if it's on any other system, I don't care, but it's called <laughs> Devilish. And I thought this would be some sort of like arcade action game. No, it's actually like a an Arkanoid clone, but it's it's got its own thing basically where you have the paddles and you're knocking a ball back and forth. The uh, the screen is 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 heading down, but what's really cool about this is that you can reconfigure the paddles. So for instance, you have one paddle or two up above each other, but then you can split them out. You can put one on its side. Plus you can control the up and down so you can throw the upper paddle higher. I don't know, it's just it like... It sounds complicated, but at the same time, I'm like enthralled. It well, sounds awesome. I don't see, the thing I like is that, you know, uh, Breakout and uh, Arkanoid have been around for so long that that's kind of a tired sort of, you know, game, mm. right? But I like games that, that try to do something new with it because I, I grew up with that. I love those games when they first came out. So, I don't know, Devilish on the, on the Game Gear. Pretty yeah, cool. That's good, a good name, too. It is. <laughs> and actually, on that same vein, mm -hmm. um... Haley uh, Wars. Yes. Um, it's a vertical shooter. It's super fun. It is. But what it does a little bit differently is that whenever you like miss one of the ships or one of the asteroids or comets that's coming at you, um, if you miss it, it goes and it hits Earth. <laughs> and you have like a gauge on the bottom that says like what percentage Earth is destroyed. And if it gets to 100, that's it. Hmm. Yeah, it's a surprisingly really fun shooter. I was like, I played this a lot. Now, uh, you're holding two versions of it here, and I wanted to, I did this because I wanted to remind myself that one of the nice things about the Game Gear is that it is region free. Mm -hmm. So often, uh, if, if, if you can't find a copy of the North American version, get the Japanese version. That's exactly what I did here. Yep. So, um, you know, and you can play either one. It's yeah. pretty cool. So, okay, so that was cool. Next up for me was a game I was a little bit of a surprise, and that is Vampire Master of Darkness. Yes! It looks <laughs> cheesy as hell. <laughs> the story's a little cheesy, but it's worth it. <laughs> it's cool. I mean, it's basically a, a Castlevania clone. I mm -hmm. mean, it, they're not even, like, sugarcoating it. It's Castlevania, <laughs> right? But it's it, I like it. For one, I find it to be a little bit easier than Castlevania for yeah. some reason. So, and to me, that's a good thing because... I agree. On the little screen, it can be kind of difficult. As a matter of fact, uh, this game on the original Game Gear screen, I think, is pretty difficult. Because mm -hmm. it's hard to see bats and stuff. Yeah. On my modded one, it changes the game. It's so much more playable. So, yeah, highly recommend. This is a fun game. Nice. And then one I really wanted to mention mm. is uh, Revenge of Drancon. Drancon? Sure. Drancon. Yeah. <laughs> um, what I really like about this game is that it's super unassuming. I mean, I would, most people probably walk by this because, like... It looks like a budget title. It looks you know. like a budget, like, yeah. I don't know, generic. <laughs> but it's Wonder Boy. <laughs> ah, and it's so fun. It's basically like the, it's the arcade version of Wonder Boy. And it's wonderful. That's weird that they changed the name of it to something like that, though. I mean... I don't even know how to say it. Come on. Like, <laughs> <laughs> and it looks super generic, huh. but this is, like, full of wonderful secrets. So if you see this, you can get it. <laughs> awesome. All right, so next up for me is a game called Dragon Crystal. Speaking of mm -hmm. games that look fairly generic. Yeah. Now, this game, when I, when I popped it in, I was like, this looks so familiar. Well, that's because it also came out as Fatal Labyrinth. Or at least the, the very similar in style. So this is kind of like a maze-like dungeon crawler, top-down. This is another game where I popped it in and I played it for a, way longer than I expected to. <laughs> yeah. Because it's so easy, it's so much fun. Essentially, you're just cruising around in this maze. You're you're slowly exposing parts of the dungeon. And combat's fun. You basically just push up against the, the, the enemy. You know, you don't have to like battle, you don't have to like, you know, button mash, you know, there's there's really not much skill. <laughs> Which is perfect for a handheld where you're just trying to kind of like have some fun, you know. But yeah. there's a lot, there's uh, there's armor upgrades and all that sort of stuff. So, I don't know, I enjoyed it quite a bit. And this game is dirt cheap. Yeah. All right. And next, I'm going to talk about Legend of Illusion, Mickey Mouse. Nice. And this one's awesome because this is in the same series of Castles of Illusion, which mm. everybody knows. Right. Um, but this one, I believe it's like a sequel. It's in the same series. Mm. Um, but it's... I think the story is a little bit more interesting, and it's just not one that anyone played. Everybody knows Castle of Illusion, mm -hmm. but this one's definitely worth it. Huh, cool. So next up is a game uh, that I'd never heard of until I got a Game Gear, and that is Axe Battler, A Legend of Golden Axe. Yes! I was gonna be like, <laughs> I know. <laughs> so 
this is a total surprise. It's basically, it reminds me of Zelda 2. Mm -hmm. where there's an overhead map and then it goes to a 2D exploration. Um, I don't know, it's just like, I, I guess it's like a side thing for Golden Axe. Mm -hmm. So, I don't know, it's pretty cool. I enjoyed it quite a bit and it plays great. Great. All right, and we wanted to mention mm. a Sonic game. Yes. <laughs> because how can you talk about a Sega system without talking about Sonic? And, and you and I were talking like, well, which one, right? Because you almost picked Sonic Drift. I really like <laughs> Sonic Drift. And Sonic Drift 2 is the only one that came out in the US, but it's really good, and I know everybody hates it, and I'm I totally, sorry. I just put you on the spot right there. <laughs> like, damn it! <laughs> I know people don't like it, but you can play it on the Sonic Gems on the GameCube. Yep, yep. So it's awesome. Anyways, this is not Sonic Drift. <laughs> this is uh, Sonic Triple Trouble, and it's in the same series as Sonic Chaos. It's the sequel. Hmm. Um, a lot of people also didn't like this one because they thought it was too easy, but part of me, if, if I'm sitting on the couch playing Sonic the Hedgehog on a handheld, Easy is fine with me because I yes. really like flying through the levels, yeah. you know, and like that's when you can like go fast and not have to worry about it as much. Yeah, I, I agree. I mean, difficulty, easy difficulty is not an automatic, you know, turn off for me. I'm like, no, 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 that's kind of cool because there's plenty of other ones that are hard. So you right. can always play those ones too. But. Yep, exactly. Hmm. All right. And then finally, uh, one of the more kind of collectible. And it's really not even that expensive, but it's Shining Force. I'm going to have to say this here. Uh, the Sword of Haja? H-A-J-H-Y? Haja. <laughs> Why? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> but this is a fantastic game on the Game Gear. It's actually one of the more highly rated ones, too. Mm -hmm. um, Shining Force games are really cool. They're very similar to Fire Emblem, yeah. where they're kind of turn-based strategy games. Now, I don't believe this one has permadeath, though. Uh, there's a lot to it. I enjoyed it quite a bit. So, and it's again, it's a little bit more collectible. So, if you find a copy, definitely check it out. So that's our buying guide for the Sega Game Gear, and it's a pretty rad system. I know. I love collecting for it. I love going to expos and retro gaming stores, mm -hmm. and everyone else is ignoring it. They're looking at Nintendo, and I just like weasel right past them, look for games I don't mm -hmm. own. It's like awesome. You it's know? great. <laughs> now the thing is, is that Hyperkin has announced that they may add. Game Gear support to the Retron 5. Yeah. I know, it's so cool. The Retron 5 is a clone system that supports a lot of different things and Game Gear was left out for some reason. I know, it's kind of why I didn't buy one. I heard it was gonna have like all these different systems and I was like, Game Gear, Game Gear, Game Gear. It supports nope. Game Boy and Game Boy Advance. It's I know. perfect to support Game Gear, <laughs> I know. <laughs> I actually reached out to them to see if they could give me some more information. They, they didn't, but uh, I will update this video in the description and also in the annotations as you know news comes available. Mm -hmm. So I'm crossing my fingers for that. Me too. I know. Well, hey, thanks for coming on the channel. Of course. Now, where can people find you on the interwebs? Um, I am on Twitter at Kinzilla, K-I-N-S-Z-I-L-L-A. And you have a YouTube channel? I have a YouTube channel. <laughs> <laughs> like three videos and two that matter. So. <laughs> two that matter. And the third one is? It's just gameplay from The Witcher <laughs> when like, I had a weird mountain bug. There are mountains in the city. Oh, really? Yeah. <laughs> It was too funny not to share. <laughs> uh, well, you've done an unboxing video. Mm -hmm. Yep, I remember that. That's awesome. All right, you can find me at Metal Jesus Rocks, uh, Twitter, YouTube, Facebook, all that sort of stuff. Yeah. All right, guys, thanks very much for watching. Thanks for subscribing, and take care. All right, now that I have the Sega Game Gear buying guide under my belt, I'm curious what other buying guides would you like to see me do? I have some ideas. There's some good stuff out there. You know what needs to be done? a PSP buying guide needs to be done. That's a pretty good one, because there's like three different models, tons of good games, 